All right, so this is our last um, session for the day. And with um, us will be Daryl Brewster. Daryl Brewster, a CEO himself, has taken um, a step into a new career. He is now the head of CECP, which is the Committee to Encourage Corporate Philanthropy. And he is an advisor to many of us and a place where we can go and get great data, insights, and advice as we start to facilitate great change within our organization. So, Daryl, I'd like to join, have you join me up on the stage. And I will let you do the introduction of your fellow panelists. Glad to be here. I'll just give you a little bit here on CECP. Uh, as we talk about leadership from the boardroom, CCP was started by uh, Paul Newman uh, and several CEOs about 15 years ago uh, with the belief that corporate America and really leading corporations around the world could truly be a force for good in society, could and, and should be a force for, uh, in society. Uh, today, we have some 200 participating companies, annual revenues approaching $8 trillion. So on a GDP basis, it would be US, China, CECP companies, so it's big companies in big scale uh, around the globe. Um, we find a lot of trends that we talk to business, four just quick trends that we're seeing that are really changing. One is consumers who care, and it really matters to them the products they're buying. Uh, Nielsen just finished a study, 43% of consumers would pay a premium price for a product that they came from a company or a brand that really cared. We're also finding that, that investors are starting to see the benefit of socially responsible companies, both in terms of dollars being invested, as well as showing that value created as companies kind of do the right thing. As we say, would you rather invest in a responsible or an irresponsible company? Uh, third is employees, and you guys have heard a lot about that now, but they really do care about the companies they work for, particularly millennials. And finally, a, uh, Edelman study on the government showing that 65% of citizens believe it will be business that solves the world's problems. Only 15% expect government to do so. So big factors that are, uh, have changed here over the last number of years. Um, we also do an annual corporate giving uh, study. I will say that despite the, uh, the slow economy, we are seeing companies contribute more, what we're kind of calling philanthropy or societal investment is going up. A lot of non-cash and employee investment is a major increase um, and an increase in strategic focus. And we'll hear about that from, from Mike as, as well. Um, we, in fact, I was used to be in the cookie business. I guess we're making cookies there. Uh, the ingredients for um, successful innovation and a successful strategy in uh, societal investment, four areas we see over and over again. By the way, these are the same I saw when I was a CEO and running a company, but it's about having a strategic connection to what the business is all about. It's about being innovative. You know, the answers may have not been here yet before. It's about partnering, collaborating with other folks. It is about measurement, measurement not for measurement's sake, but measuring so you can get better and improve. And absolutely critical because this is an investment in the future is CEO engagement. Um, and with that in mind, I am delighted to introduce um, the CEO of DirecTV, Mike White. Uh, Mike is a uh, dynamic leader, uh, grew up, um, uh, went to uh, Boston College uh, in his uh, early days. Uh, and then uh, Johns Hopkins, in, uh, degree in inter international relations, uh, worked at uh, Arthur Anderson, worked with Avon, with, um, in the consulting fields, and then spent a career as a CFO at, at Pepsi, uh, both in, and then uh, ran businesses uh, around the, the, the globe. In fact, I think we competed for a while. Uh, he ran Pepsi, uh, Frito-Lay uh, Europe when I was running Nabisco. And over the last few years has become the uh, president, CEO, and chairman of the board of DirecTV. And you'll see a real sense. Mike, let's give him a big round of applause. <laughs> and welcome. Thanks, Gerald. I think you'll, you'll get a sense of just the importance here of CEO leadership here as we, uh, we, we, we move forward. Welcome. Thanks. Great to be here to have you. Uh, as you uh, look at uh, the world, you guys have just uh, completed a, uh, so, uh, your social responsibility report. It laid out a lot of the programs and plans that you all have been uh, working on. Uh, can you tell us about the journey? I mean, you've been now since 2010 yep. at uh, DirecTV, the journey that you all have, uh, have gone through. Yeah, we, we've got a terrific couple folks that have really led the journey in the, in the back of the room. Joe Bosch, our head of human resources, Caroline Leach, who's corporate communications and corporate citizenship, and, and probably the prime mover, Tina Moorfield, is director of corporate citizenship that has kind of been with me the whole, the whole journey. You know, when I came to DirecTV from PepsiCo, uh, I mean, the concept of 
you can't have a healthy business community if you don't have a healthy community was pretty, pretty common for me coming out of Avon and PepsiCo, particularly running international. I, I guess, you know, when you travel the world and you get to see not everybody lives in uh, Menlo Park or, uh, or Beverly Hills or Greenwich, Connecticut, and, and there's a whole other world out there with enormous societal challenges. Um, and you realize that as a company, particularly as a multinational, for all the reasons you had up there, by right. the way, whether it's millennials want to work for companies like that, it's vital to your employer brand, consumers care, governments care. Um, but I think the other thing we learned at DirecTV is it's also a terrific way to develop leadership. It, okay. You know, it, because you, when you're working in the nonprofit world, you can't just go tell everybody what to do. Mm -hmm. So your influence skills, your teamwork skills, your collaboration, you know, even I think sometimes just a sense of humility about how big the problems are. So okay. when I got to DirecTV, we're not a huge company. We're not Exxon or, or the Coca-Cola company or PepsiCo. Um, we had some activities that had kind of gone on their own, blossomed, uh, but, but probably wasn't that focused, to be honest with you. We had a matching gift program. Um, we did a little bit of stuff with uh, buying tables and mm -hmm. sponsoring different events, but it was kind of a bit all over the map. And I guess the realization that we came to is, you know, for a company our size, we really needed to focus first mm -hmm. and foremost. And second, that it was going to be more sustainable if we focused on just a couple themes and if we could make them as linked to the business okay. as we could. Right. So, for instance, we decided to focus on science and technology and math education in the elementary schools, particularly the inner city schools in L.A. So it was close to our headquarters, okay. L.A. Mm -hmm. You know, throughout DirecTV, whether it's the engineers, the software, you know, the IT department, or frankly, whether it's even the technicians that are out in the field that are mostly high school educated, you need science and math. So it was a kind of a way to say, look, to the organization, this is vital to our future any which way you look at it. Um, and I think that kind of got folks excited. Um, we were able to do a partnership with the LA Partnership for Schools. We had a terrific partner there and kind of from there we, we kind of built on the program and it's gotten a tremendous amount of momentum, I would say, uh, of its own accord. I mean, I, I started with a couple ideas, but uh, I can remember when they came to me and said, hey, we're going to do something at our, we, we have an annual convention for all of our dealers. It's called Revolution. And I think the team came to me and said, by the way, we're already planning, we're going to go build a playground with Kaboom in New Orleans. And, you know, one of the areas that had been flooded. And I thought, well, that's great. Whose idea was that? Well, it turned out it was one of the, one of the folks that were having, you know, we had 700 people coming together. We had 500 people for a day, wow. all of our partners building this huge, it was the biggest playground build Kaboom had ever done. And, and we did it in a day. Wow. We leveraged our partners, you know, we leveraged Kaboom, I mean, and I think that's one of the other lessons out of this is that we're, we're only better when we leverage partners. Sure. Whether it's a Kaboom on the playground build or Habitat for Humanity or, frankly, in our case, we're lucky because of the relationships we have in the media space. You know, we went and did a, I, I took my uh, senior team to renovate a school in one of the, uh, kind of one of the parts of Watts and... Uh, Part of the surprise at the end of the program was Oprah Winfrey showing up to, to do a talk to the kids. Oprah. And, you know, those are things that we can kind of call on favors as direct TV that others might not be able to do. Sure. So, so. a couple of really key themes uh, there. I mean, you kind of talked about why CSR is important to your group. But you also talked about sort of the importance of kind of the, the how. One was the need to focus. Yep. That you can't, even though there are so many issues and problems that are out there, you kind of got to pick ones that are really yep. relevant to what you all do. Um, the other is really leveraging the assets that you have. In your yep. case, one of those assets is actually Oprah, right? And, yep. and other skills and talents that, that, that an organization might have. Yep. Um, how, how critical are those? Well, just, you know, we're not, as I say, we're not a huge company, company, but when I got there, I think Tina, who was the was today the primary person on our whole corporate citizenship was kind of half-time this and half-time corporate communications. So you don't need hundreds of people on it, but mm -hmm. you do need dedicated resources. So I think Tina's got all of three people. Okay. But a big, a big staff for but, many. But right. they're connected to it. They've got a network so that when we, you know, when I said to Tina, look, I have no idea 
what would be the most leverageable thing we could do for the inner city schools in the science and math arena, mm -hmm. she knew who to call and to go find out and to kind of get advice and counsel from, you know, the, the partnership for schools. In that case, uh, uh, Marshall Tuck was running it. And uh, they've been great partners over the years because, you know, they're the ones who turned us on to ST Math, which has now been picked up by the Business right. Roundtable and a couple of others as an, it's kind of an online math program right. for, for uh, elementary and middle schools. Um, but you've got to have those, that network, and then you've sure. got to have partnerships because, you know, in and of ourselves, we can kind of go out and do some things, but to really leverage your impact, do that all. you need partners. Right, right. Yeah, and, you know, some of these you know, strikes, you know, focus, connecting to your strategy, and that's similar to a lot of other challenges in business, right? Yeah. You, you know, that you have the same issues as a CEO on the societal engagement as you would of creating a new market or yeah. leveraging new products. Yeah, I think it teaches you stuff. When you go out on, you know, you go out in the inner city schools or you, you watch, you know, kind of what it takes to build a playground in a day, I mean, teamwork mm -hmm. and collaboration right. is, it, you know, you, you learn a lot about leadership I would argue. Mm -hmm. uh, I, it was funny when we went to the uh, when we were kicking off the ST, ma ST math program in, in one of the inner city schools. Uh, I went to the school. Mayor, Mayor Villaragosa was there, and we were kind of walking around the classroom. And up on the wall, they had I don't know ten rules for collaboration or something. And sure. you know, it's kind of the old uh, share your toys and play nice in the <laughs> sandbox kind of stuff. But I I took my iPhone, took a picture, and sent it around to my <laughs> direct reports. Uh, it's hoping that we could do everything you needed to learn. You learned but, in kindergarten, right? That's but, right. Yeah, <laughs> but but it is amazing. And I mean, the other thing is you you meet these principals in these inner city schools, and you you see a different model of leadership. But so much of what I believe about leadership, you see in common, right? Too, right? Yeah. I mean, That's so right. it's I I think it's it's I think it makes us better people. I know the organization gets jazzed about it. Right. I mean, we just had a group. I think it was yesterday, the day before, went and renovated a teacher's lounge. We, we overhauled our corporate headquarters uh, in, uh, in El Segundo, and we didn't want to just throw away all the furniture, so we decided to donate it. Mm -hmm. So we donated it to a school so we could overhaul the, the teacher's lounge. This was a school for kids with disabilities. And, you know, people are genuinely touched when mm -hmm. they go and do this. And you, I, I just think it grounds you as a person and as a leader Sure. In a way, you wouldn't necessarily get, you know, in right. another. You know, in, in this area, and you know, there's a number of CEOs we get to work with that, that that truly get it, right? And they really are engaged, and they realize this is not just part of what you do as a CEO. You, you're in a unique position to really make a difference in the world. Did you have an aha moment along the way that just said, you know, this is something that I'm going to put my own personal mark on? We're going to go out and we're going to make a difference. You know, probably. F for me, at PepsiCo, when I was running Frito-Lay Europe, Africa, Middle East, uh, we had a big snacks business in South Africa. And uh, we had a plant that made potato chips and cheese puffs and tortilla chips. And uh, I went down, and they were trying to explain to me some of the unique hygienic challenges when they bring new workers on. You know, they don't know enough to wash their hands coming from the bathroom, whatever else. And, and they came to me and said, We're, we want to hire two full-time nurses, and we want the okay to give out free condoms. Now, this was, this was a decade ago, okay? And I'm like, the business is going to give out free condoms? I mean, how, how does... Well, then they took me through what's happening with AIDS in South Africa. So this was 2001. And all of a sudden, you realize the kids are going to be orphans, and I mean, it had to do with your workforce. Right. So there was a direct connection but you couldn't get people to get tested. But by hiring these two nurses who were, you know, very, very good at finding ways to get folks to assure them it's going to be confidential and that it's in their interest to get tested, because, you know, you have the president of the country right. saying some kind of rather foolish things about AIDS back then in South Africa. But for me, it was like I never would have thought of business, a business giving out free condoms and kind of advice and counsel on AIDS um, back then, but it was pretty clear. It was fundamental to the workforce needs of the business. And in that particular culture, um, it's, it's a complicated subject. Sure. So I, I suppose this kind of started there and, and kind of when I got to DirecTV, um, you know, it was let's do something. I mean, well, let's make a difference. Right. Let's do something more than just make a profit. 
and, and I think it was for all the reasons that you had up there, but it's been amazing to see our org health scores have never been higher. Okay. With the work that we're doing, um, you know, we've grown the program year in and year out. It's got a life of its own. And, right. you know, I think it's that balance that the professor was talking about where, you know, we try and give them a little bit of framework on theming, mm -hmm. but then give them a lot of room to kind of decide what each team wants to do. And, you know, we did a, a renovation with the East LA Women's Center. This is the first Hispanic um, women's center for abused uh, Hispanic women in East LA. Um, and, you know, again, one of the reasons we do this stuff, you know, the technicians we have are really, unlike me, are really handy around the house uh, at a renovation. Plus, we can put in a new TV and, and a few other things. Well, we went and did the job. And, and to be honest with you, most of the people that were doing the work were direct TV technicians who make $50,000 a year. They were, you know, I mean, I showed up, I worked for an hour, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the you know, a bunch of the white, collar workers were there, but, but it was the technicians who took it over and made it their own. And I didn't know anything about it, and I don't know, a month later someone said to me, did you know that the technicians went back for Thanksgiving and brought 50 turkeys because they were wow. so touched by That's the work great. they did. Sure. So it gets a life of its own because, you know, all of a sudden people kind of feel they're part of a community, and right. it matters that they can make a difference. That's terrific. Now, you know, as a CEO, um, and you've talked about some of, of what you've brought, but what, what are the, the, the real challenges that you face in terms of both rolling out a program like this, really kind of building it and sustaining it over, over time? Well, you know, I think it's a, it's a dual challenge. One is it is some of the societal problems are really, really hard. <laughs> you know, they don't lend themselves to sound bites on either MSNBC or Fox or in Washington, D.C., and the solutions are really tough. And so, you know, making sure that you're measuring stuff so you know whether you're making progress, that you're, second of all, that you don't get fragmented trying to do too many things. Because mm -hmm. in some ways, people get excited about it and they want to do more, and that's good. But, I mean, I don't have any problem getting new ideas out of Tina or the other, you know, kind of even, sure. as I said, the field is off on their own. I mean, mm -hmm. this thing's got its... It's got its own life, right. but keeping it focused, I think, because you, you know, you want to make a difference. I mean, mm -hmm. and so we've tried to say, let's let's make sure we're continuing to invest in in science and math, elementary, middle schools. Let's get LA right. We've started to branch out now into Denver, where we have a big office. New York is kind of a much. We have another office in New York. We've had to do it a little differently there because the metropolitan area is so huge. But trying to figure out where you can magnify. And, and make a difference is one, and not lose focus, I would say, as you go uh, down the path, I think. is. But, I mean, the needs are so great, it's how do you keep focus but keep making right. progress. You also talked about the importance of collaboration. That's just so critical in this area. Now, Mike, for those who know, probably had one of the most difficult jobs in the world because you headed up the Snack Venture Worldwide, which was a joint venture yeah. between Pepsi and, and, and General Mills, which is not easy to bring these two corporate cultures together, and which, which didn't did extremely successful. You know, are, are there lessons learned there as you, you think about collaboration with your group and partnering with other organization that's, uh, that, that, that's valuable? Boy, I, I just think every time I go out with one of these, I learn something. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you walk a mile in somebody else's shoes, you spend a day or a half a day in a different environment um, with a different group of people, you, you get to know your team better. I mean, you, you gotta listen, mm -hmm. <laughs> it helps to listen. I, I think um, you build bonds and relationships that you wouldn't otherwise get in the workforce when you show up nine to five, whatever, and go home. But, you know, I think it's, Look, I, I, I think it starts, you've got a common mission, mm -hmm. which is we're either going to renovate this school today or we're building a playground or, you know, a bunch of us went and worked in a food kitchen in, uh, in Vegas because we had too many people sign up for the playground build. Uh, so we kind of had to divide it up. But, you know, you learn something, uh, you know, you kind of realize how lucky you are mm -hmm. and uh, with the education you've got and, and with the opportunities you have. And I, I think it, it's humbling. And it, I think it just makes you a better leader because you're more grounded. I mean, I think you, you have a better perspective. And I'm a mm -hmm. huge believer that, you know, anybody who thinks they've got it all figured out, you know, right. th these are complex challenges. Sure. But you, you also can't just go tell everybody what to do, you know. Mm -hmm. 
and yet you want to be organized. I think to the, to right. the scaling point earlier, you know, we organized an assembly line when we were filling bags um, mm -hmm. in, in Vegas, and, and it was, you know, I had a chat with the, the guy running it, and he'd come from Dallas. He said, tell me, what's the difference between the, the biggest food kitchen in Dallas and here? And he says, night and day, because of the, the collapse of the economy in Vegas mm -hmm. and what had happened, and right. they were still sending kids home on Fridays, 5,000 or so mm -hmm. meals in a bag. Mm -hmm. So, right. anyway. That's great. The, uh, what, what comment you had made earlier is about measures and metrics. Um, and it's an area that's talked yeah. a lot about in the, in the social space um, and measures, and particularly as people get involved with, with, with corporate activities. What's your, your philosophy uh, on that? Uh, well, I, I think if you want to get something done, you've got to measure it. But by the same token, I also believe in something called a balanced scorecard, which is, you know, you can't overly focus on one metric on anything. But I've got to tell you, even going into, but whether it's KIPP schools, charter school, or whether you go into the LA Partnership for Schools, which is part of the public school system, it's the bottom 20 schools in LA, they're measuring everything. I mean, in you know, with the online learning, they're able to measure kids' progress and then tailor the, yeah. tailor the curriculum mm -hmm. accordingly to each kid. So, look, I, I think you have to measure stuff if you want to get results. But you should never think that just the numbers alone tell the story, they don't. And you got to have a balanced scorecard, if you will, in looking at are you building engagement, you know, are you bringing the kids along. I mean, it's not there's not just a synced symbol profit number. Sure, not that sure. simple. Right. Because you want it to be sustainable. Mm -hmm. And I think if there's one lesson we've learned in business after the collapse of the mortgage industry, is be careful about measuring just one number. Right. You know, you got to look for sustainability beyond green and other stuff. I mean, just looking for business strategy to be sustainable, the same thing here, I think. Sure, sure, no, powerful. Measures as a means to an end, not yeah. the end as, as we think through it. Yeah. So, I mean, great progress you've come in over the last few years at DirecTV, uh, building off the strength that you've had. What's next for, for DirecTV? Well, what do you, see? you know, first of all, we, you know, we, we review our plans with our board of directors once a year. I think that helps from a sponsorship okay. and support standpoint with our board. They're very enthusiastic in support of what we're doing. Um, we put out our first um, report, I think it was a year and a half ago. Didn't do it publicly because we wanted to walk before we run. Sure. Um, but our newest one will be out in another week and it will be public. We've signed up for GRI. That's a learning process too mm -hmm. in terms of the, the, the global reporting metrics that you have to, to kind of live by. So that's a journey. You know, but I, I think what, what you find is it becomes more and more just part of how you do business. If you want to have a values-based culture, um, and that's certainly important to us at DirecTV, then this just becomes part and parcel of who we are and how we do business. It's not an option. It's not a sideline. Mm -hmm. um, we have linked it to our green sustainability. We call it televisionary efforts, okay. um, which is a part and parcel of what we're doing as well on the, uh, the corporate citizenship side. But, you know, I, I just think you can't have a healthy company mm -hmm. if you don't have a healthy community. And frankly, communities... You know, some of the social challenges are so big, they need all our help, mm -hmm. and, and then some. And so I think we have an important role to play, and I think we have unique skills, you know, that we can bring to the party in business, and certainly at DirecTV, um, at least our technicians sure. are a lot better with a hammer and nail than I am. So, <laughs> anyway. No, that's terrific. That's terrific. Uh, any other comments you'd like to kind of share for the, for the group here? Um, you know, great progress that you all have, have, have made. Uh, that are you know, kind of helpful. I mean, we have many people here are dealing with CEOs, right? And they're trying to figure out how to convince them to invest more or to provide new programs, plans. What really helps you that you, you, you sounds like you and the team have really made some major strides. What really helps you yeah. to make those calls and decisions? And well, I mean, I rely on Tina and Caroline and Joe for, for advice and counsel, but it starts with having a supportive CEO, I think, okay. that, that sees it as this is important. Mm -hmm. You know, because if it's not important, then it doesn't get on the, the agenda. But, I, I, you know, I think that you've got to stay focused. And, and I think the fact of the matter is, even if you're a small company, you can make a difference. Mm -hmm. You know, as I said, we got all of three people. The amount of money that we do in cash is single-digit millions. It's mm -hmm. not, it, you know, it's not huge. Right. But it's really, to me, it's part, I almost think of it not as a philanthropic sure. budget, it's part of my leadership development budget. Right. It's part of our community relations and public relations budget for a brand like DirecTV that's important sure. for our brand. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's not 
just a nice to do. It's part and parcel of who we are, our values, and I think the, the capabilities that we have. And I gotta tell you, with millennials, if you wanna recruit and retain millennials, you better sure. be, you know, you better be buying into this because they demand it. Mm -hmm. They insist on it. And it's just, it's not optional. Right. It's, it's not just the right thing to do, it's, but I think it's part and parcel of the more you can tie it into a business strategy or an area where the business can make a unique contribution. Like in our case, sure. we thought science, technology, and math, mm -hmm. or our technician workforce, which is good with a hammer and, and, and a screwdriver, you know, those are the kinds of things where you can leverage with that and your partnerships. It, it becomes really part and parcel of your business and your sure. business strategy, not some hobby. Right, right. Yeah. And that's, I think we're seeing that across uh, CCP, many of our companies, is it's, it, we're beyond philanthropy. Philanthropy is nice, it's good yeah. stuff, but this is beyond that. This is part of a business strategy where companies are, are, are being, as Paul Newman said, truly a force for good in yeah. society. Well, this is terrific. We appreciate your, uh, your thoughts and, Thanks, and comments and uh, nice uh, flying out up here to, to, to share those with Thanks us. Thanks very Thank much, you. guys. Very good. Good stuff. That was great.